Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ali Nirani. I'm with the National Immigration Forum, and I want to thank everybody for coming today from across the country to the national strategy session of the campaign to forge a new consensus on immigrants in America. I want, first of all, to ask everybody to give themselves a round of applause. This is pretty impressive. There are people from over 26 states represented here today. Over the course of the day, we're going to see 250 people move through this room. Tomorrow, there are nearly 50 meetings on the Hill scheduled with Republicans and Democrats. We've got over, we have two dozen, I believe, speakers from the Hill coming to address the legislative breakfast. This morning, there was a press conference with regional national leadership that was covered by, actually in today's paper, by the Washington Post. There were pre major daily papers, major regional papers, uh, as well as television and radio in the, in the room. So it's clear that the work has paid off. And it's clear that something is different about where we are in this debate on immigration reform. And what's different is you. What's different is the leadership that you've shown to not only bring all of your work and your, your energy to Washington, D.C., but also all of the work that we've done together over the last 18 months. Because it was about 18 months ago that we realized <clears throat> that whoever was to win on December 6th would govern a country that's divided by immigration's toxic immigration debate. And that the leaders garnered here today, you know, representing, I would say, thousands and thousands of leaders and your colleagues across the country knew that things would only get worse unless we all started to act. So conservative and moderate faith, law enforcement and business leaders launched a campaign to forge a new consensus on immigrants in America. And we all went far beyond Washington, D.C. to find new allies. Well, we did who live here in D.C. We just went and visited you. Through this campaign, we found that once you leave the dysfunction of the Beltway, there is common ground on the need for an immigration process that works for our economy and our families. So today, all of us who are here now, who will be with us over the next two days, are here to call upon the 113th Congress to work together to create a 21st century immigration process. The consensus we found comes from the common crisis facing families and businesses and cuts across professional sectors, geographic regions, political stripes, and regional belie religious beliefs. Our consensus lies in a common belief that Congress has failed the American people and the immigrants who are at the mercy of our dysfunctional immigration policy. Our consensus is steeped in the common values of family, of work, of security, shared by conservatives and liberals alike. The fact is, Americans aren't divided by the immigration debate. Rather, politicians on both sides of the aisle use the immigration debate to divide America. That is no longer acceptable. We need common sense fixes to create a reasonable immigration process that moves our nation forward. And we all understand that Americans prosper when we have enforceable laws that value immigrants and immigration. So our points of consensus are clear. They're based on all the work that we've done together over the last two years, and they include, number one, we must modernize our nation's immigration laws so that future immigration of workers and families is legal and orderly. America is the land of freedom and opportunity and will always attract talented and ambitious individuals. We need a process that celebrates freedom and values hard work, welcoming the engineer as well as the farm worker. Second, we must deal honestly with temporary workers and aspiring citizens by creating a workable roadmap to lawful status and citizenship. These laborers and aspiring citizens are part of our communities and our economy and must be treated with dignity. And America needs a just solution for the undocumented immigrants who are currently living in our communities, contributing to the well-being of our cities and towns. Third, we recognize the need for enforcement in the workplace and on the border. As U.S. citizens, we have a right to expect the federal government to develop and enforce laws regarding who is in authorized to work and who may cross our borders. To do this, we need a functioning immigration system that has legal channels for people to come to the U.S. for legitimate purposes and allows our law enforcement officials to focus their resources on smugglers, criminals, and others. At the end of the day, we all know this, that immigration is not about politics. It's about human dignity. 
And how we treat new immigrants reflects our commitment to the values that we hold dear as a nation. So yes, now it is time for the president to lead members from both parties through an honest, transparent legislative process to fix our immigration system. And yes, it is time for, for members of both parties to catch up to America's desire for just immigration laws. So as we'll hear today and tomorrow, those who hold a Bible, those who wear a ba badge, those who own a business expect exactly that. So I want to thank everybody for coming today. So we have a full schedule, but it's going to be a, an engaging schedule where we have panels from each of the regions where we've been working in, uh, the Mountain West, the South, the Midwest. We have a range of, of leadership from faith, from law enforcement, and from business. Uh, and all of that is going to, to not only end with a small you know, cocktail reception, gathering, celebration this evening, but then tomorrow we're taking this energy and this, this strategy to, de to the Hill. Our first speaker is um, my boss, so everybody has to give him a rounding, you know, a round of applause, loud round of applause. But more seriously, he is, he is an incredible leader in, in his own right. Uh, Dr. Warren Stewart is, a, is the senior pastor at First Institutional Baptist Church, and the leadership that he has shown on immigration is inspirational. He has led communities in uh, the faith community, law enforcement, business in Arizona to have a more just perspective and approach to immigration. But beyond that, he was the individual who led the work to bring the Martin Luther King holiday to the state of Arizona. Uh, I see him as a great friend and a great ally, and I think that all of us will see him as a great friend and ally uh, in just a few minutes. So, Pastor Stewart, thank you very much. Good afternoon. The delegation from Arizona brought the weather. <laughs> Supervisor Mary Rose Wilcox and others uh, made sure that we do that. This is a Kairos moment. This is a Kairos moment. Kairos is a New Testament Greek word that indicates the right, opportune time, even God's timing. It is a moment of destiny evidencing favor. It is no extra or it is no ordinary moment, for it is an extraordinary moment appointed to fulfill God's purpose. It has been said, timing is everything. So thank you, much obliged. Muchas gracias for responding to our invitation to engage in forging a new consensus on immigrants and America at this Kairos moment in holy history. This is not only a Kairos moment, this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Our being here from all across the nation is a good thing. Just look around the room and see who are here. You and me, men and women, representatives from the five major racial groups, conservatives, moderates, liberals, Republicans, Democrats, independents, law enforcement, corporate executives, labor, Protestants, Catholics, Jews, Muslims, other faiths, preachers, priests, pastors, evangelicals, farmers, farm workers, boomers, busters, bridges, and dreamers. Ali Norani, our able and untiring executive director of the National Immigration Forum, has so aptly labeled us as a coming together of badges, businesses, and Bibles. In today's political climate of post-general election, still seemingly bitter, stubborn posturing, political partisanship on both sides of the aisle, we are in our nation's capital pro-partnering 
with similar motives and conciliatory problem solving around one common issue. Today is a culmination of 18 months of work, but in the words of Ali, the first day of our new journey is today, a journey to create a just, humane immigration process. So again, I declare to you today, this is a Kairos moment, and this is a good thing. Yet even more than that, this is a great thing. This is not just a Kairos moment. It is not just a good thing. It is a great thing. Yes, this good Kairos moment is a great thing. And I suggest to you today that our being here today is a great thing because its subject matter deals with the morality of our cause. It deals with the morality of our cause. Someone asked me recently, Pastor Stewart, why are you involved in the fight for compassionate, comprehensive immigration reform? And my answer was quick and simple. It is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. When Petra Falcone, an amazing Mexican hermano who has been involved in improving the daily lives of the least, the lowly, the left out, and the lonely in the desert southwest for most of her life. When she asked me a couple of years ago to stand alongside her and hundreds of thousands of my Latino brothers and sisters in Arizona against Arizona's infamous SB 1070, again, I quickly and simply said, of course, because this fight is all about justice rather than just us. For you see, <laughs> for you see, justice is a moral issue. Justice in the biblical sense is right relationships with God, with oneself, and with others, all others. Not just those who look like us, talk like us, live like us, think like us, work like us, worship like us, and vote like us. No, no. Justice is right relationship with God, oneself, and all others. Not far from here is the Lincoln Memorial, which honors the truly great American president who led a country at war with itself over another moral issue, the abolition of slavery. In the second of his two addresses inscribed therein are his words concluding his second inaugural address, and I quote, with malice toward none, with charity for all, as God gives us to see the right with firmness in the right, let us strive to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. In that same memorial are etched the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., this nation's 20th century drum major for justice, a Baptist preacher from his I Have a Dream speech that he delivered on the Lincoln Memorial steps in 1963. And I quote, we have also come to this hallowed spot to remind America of the fierce urgency of now. Now is the time to make justice a reality for all of God's children. We have gathered in the Ronald Reagan building, so here is what Daniel Griswold wrote about him for the Cato Institute in 2004, and I quote, Reagan's words and deeds regarding immigration were equally expansive at a ceremony at Ellis Island in 1982, he spoke movingly of immigrants who possessed a determination that with hard work and freedom, they would live a better life and their children even more so. Yes, 
Our being here in this place on this day is a great thing. Yet great if we will be able to move Congress and our president to do the right, just, and moral thing on immigration. As I conclude, not only is this a Kairos moment, not only is this a good thing, not only is this a great thing, what we are doing here today, but this, my brothers and sisters, is a God thing. This is a God thing. Throughout the Bible, its holy scriptures call for loving kindness and consideration for resident aliens and foreigners in our midst demanding God-fearing people not to wrong or oppress them. Even Jesus, in Matthew 25, informs us that we will be judged by God how we welcome a stranger among us. Lest we forget, Jesus and his parents for a while were undocumented immigrant refugees in Egypt fleeing from Herod's envious wrath. So this is a God thing. This is a good thing. This is a great thing. And this, my brothers and sisters, is a Kairos moment to develop strategies today that when compassionate, comprehensive, just, humane immigration reform beginning tomorrow on the hill. Si se puede, yes we can. Dios te bendiga. May God bless you. You should see what our board meetings are like. <laughs> Sir, uh, I, Pastor Stewart, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Um, those are words of, of clarity, of justice, and of inspiration. Thank you. Um, 